This is the camera, the A7R5, that is going to take on the R5. We're here to talk about my dream. Oh, I had a dream. Yes, I did. I had a Sony dream. I had an A7R5 dream. Yes, what? Five? We just got the four. Oh yeah, you know, Sony get these cameras out every two years. 2021, there'll be an A7R5. Let's dream about it. Let's talk about it. We've got nothing else to do. We're locked at home. Let's do it. so pumped that I can dream a dream, I dream, I can dream about a camera. I love dreaming and I want to dream about all the things that Sony are going to do for me, for me, because it's my dream, in the Sony a7R 5 dream camera. Yes, 5, Roman 5. So excited. Let's talk about the dream specs. And not only do I want to talk about them, but I want you to talk about your dream specs. What do you want to see? What do you want to see? We've got 60 megapixels as probably the highlight right now, the absolute highlight with the A7R 4 So let's start right there. Let's just dive right in, get this video over and done with. <laughs> Lickety split, A7R 5 It's not going to have 80 megapixels. I'm so sorry. So sorry. In my dream world, in a 35 mil sensor, with those photo sites jammed in there, all 62 million of them, 60.5 or whatever it is, effective pixels. It's too many. I feel like we're gonna get to a point of diminishing return. So please, Sony, dream number one, do not give me any more megapixels in my Sony A7R5. You could even think about, I know it's mental, it's crazy. You could even think about, Less, I know, lateral thinking, less pixels. Why don't we just round it at 50? I feel like from a high ISO perspective, an image pipeline perspective, et cetera, et cetera, we don't need more. Sony, if you want more pixels, you give us a big amount, you give us a larger sensor, but I want my 35 mil to be, to have high ISO, dynamic range, and not be absolutely stretched to breaking point. But if you must, give me somewhere between 50 and 60 megapixels. Please do not go any higher. I just don't want to deal with the files. They're just too big. So that's dream number one. Dream number two is, here's my A7R 3 Well, you, it's only, I just want you to keep making this grip here just keep making it bigger. Just, just make it bigger until it's big. Big enough for a guy like me who's got big hands. And in the big hand game, I reckon I, I'm only average in the big hand game. I think there's people with much, much larger hands than me who must be going, I just can't buy a Sony because I, I, I actually can't hold on to it. So keep those ergonomics going. The grip larger, sorry. That's annoying, isn't it? Make, should have taken them off. Make the thing bigger. So let's talk about the EVF, the electronic viewfinder. They keep getting better, don't they? Well, I don't have too much to say here. The A7R4 was better than the A7R3. I think the A7R5 should be better than the A7R4. Six million pixels, a bit more maybe. Let's do that, better. Most importantly, I want the blackout to be as quick as possible and I want the quality to have the same level of quality regardless of what mode you're in. It's just always looking absolutely epic and fantastic. Whether you're shooting 4K or 40 or whatever megapixels you end up having in the camera, you understand what I'm saying. Let's talk about video. Haven't Canon thrown down the gauntlet? They've thrown it down with 8K 30 frames per second raw internal video. Raw internal video. And I would say of any camera that's gonna be the 8K raw internal camera in Sony's line, if they would consider cannibalizing their video camera line, it would be the A7R5 up against the R5. Weird, isn't it? R5, A7R5. 
R5, A7, R5. They've got the same name. Whoops, hmm. Was that an accident? Maybe not. This is the camera, the A7R5, that is gonna take on the R5. This is the camera that is gonna have the 8K, the raw, the internal, and this is my dream. In, in this country, when this camera first came out, it was five and a half thousand dollars. Maybe it might, might have even been $5,999. Without dollar here in Australia tanking anymore, I'm guessing the R5 could easily be 6,000 or more, and so would the A7 R5. Also in video, I would like to see, of course, 4K, 120 FPS, RAW would be nice, but it doesn't have to be. But let's have it. And if I was gonna choose between the two, 8K or the 4K 120, as we've seen before in this video right here on the Nikon Z8, 4K 120. That's what I want to see in 4K. Card slots, yes. Sony, you're gonna be doing raw recording 8K. SD may well be specified to do it. Don't go there. Let's go CFX Express and let's go dual slots CFX Express on the Sony A7 R5, Canon R5, Sony R5. Oh, it's getting confusing, isn't it? That's what we want. That's my dream. I want those slots. So if I decide I want to work with a Nikon, a Canon or a Sony, and I want to have high-end cameras, I want to be using just the one high-end media that's the future. It's the future, it's just out new. CF Express has only been in the wild this year. SD's been out since uh, maybe over two decades ago. Let's go into the future now. Surely this format, SD, they can't keep pushing it forever. No more I need to say here. You understand what I mean? An end to SD, let's move into the future. Lenses, well we know, we know Sony, they've got lenses under control. We know that their mount is open to a few other third party manufacturers, so nothing to talk about with lenses. yippee ki -yay. keep it up. Next, let's talk about focus, okay? Let's talk about focusing. Look, Sony, you've got that covered. It's one, two thumbs up. There's, there's really, my only discussion here would be, if we've got eye detect, dog detect, I think there's word of bird detect, people detect, face detect. What else do we want? What would, what would we dream of if we wanted something else that's detected? Birds move, obviously. Um, in all seriousness, I wonder if we could have like a b ball detect, if you could sort of have a Sony seeing a soccer ball with its specific pattern that a soccer ball has. Something like that might be useful. Might be more useful in the A9, but that's okay. Sony tend to pass this technology around to all their different cameras. So let's keep working on that, uh, those algorithms because you're doing a great job. But right now, focus, top of the range. One piece of technology that I have found really frustrating with my Sony versus say my Nikons, all of them, as in the Z50, Z6 and Z7, is with the Sonys, when you flick between being on video and round to stills, the settings are global. We have global settings. So, and, and often when you're shooting stills, you're gonna be shooting with different settings than with video. Whereas with the Nikons, when you change from stills to video, you have separate sandboxed settings, which means literally in the space of one second, you can be boom, in your stills mode, bang, doing what you're doing in your stills, and then boom, in your video mode, and bang, you can be doing what you wanna do in video, and there's two sets of settings. Now for me, this is an essential change to the way Sony who deliver this hybrid camera. This is a hybrid camera designed to do both. And for the sort of shooting I do, you might have a moment where you want both a still and video of the same thing that's happening. And it might only be happening for 10 seconds. And in that 10 seconds, if you've got to readjust each time you flip backwards and forwards, which is what you've got to do with the Sony, you've lost the video or you've lost the shot. Please Sony of all the features we're talking about today, 
That to me is actually the most important. You're selling hybrid cameras. Make them as efficient as possible. That is a real dream from my perspective. That'd be cool. Sony, look, Sony, you're at a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to me because I've used a lot of different cameras. Uh, Hasselblads, Nikons, Canons, Sony's. Use them all, own them all. I'm sorry to say your menu systems, they're not up there with some of your competitors. Now I'm a little bit worried that uh, the core logic of the camera and how it works right down in the code way down low is set a certain way and it would be very difficult for the logic where you have lots of, lots of menus that are short as opposed to less menus that are a bit longer. And then within those menus are things that you'd be, think you'd be looking for. Now, it's a minor thing, I agree. And you do get used to it over time, I agree. And I have, and I use multiples. I still think the Sony is the least efficient. That's all I'm saying here. So in my dream camera, I'd like to see the efficiencies improved just a little. Well, there you go. This is my dream A7R5, Canon R5. Sony R5, A7R5, oh, it's confusing, isn't it? You know, when both of these cameras are out, which they will be soon enough, because the R5 is probably going to be the second half of this year, Canon R5. The Sony A7R5 could be next year. It could, it's possible. Sony have been moving that fast. Who knows? But that's my dream. I would love to hear what your Sony A7R5 dream is. This is a flagship camera that covers so many different people's use cases. It's a very important camera, equally as important as the A7 IV, which hopefully we'll see one day. Please, tell me what you think. This is my Melbourne Award. Very proud of my Melbourne Award. It's for my individual contribution to the city. Cool, huh? It has been so lovely to see you. If this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. Please subscribe. Click on the bell if you want to have notifications so you know every time I do something. Who wouldn't want to know every time I do something? Please like, please share, and I will see you very, very soon. Oh, yes, and we've got over 200 episodes. If you want to watch some more, just click on the Meadow and Photography down there. I can't buy. See you.